Take a look at the Fuso starting grid from the pole position. It's back-to-back -back poles. Scotty McLaughlin, Fabian Coulthard, congratulations. 250 races in the V8 supercar business. Nick Perkett continuing the fine form that he found in Townsville. James Courtney with great tyre condition. James Moffat, as I said before, he'll be looking to build on yesterday's very strong wet weather performance. Jamie Winkup, our series leader. Shane Van Gisbergen, dry set up yesterday. What an unbelievable run. Jason Bright stalled it on the line yesterday. He won't want to do that today. On the softer tyre, David Reynolds has found some form. Position number 10, Chas Mostert, then Garth Tander, unfortunately off the road down at turn two yesterday. And then it was Michael Caruso, Scotty Pye and Lee Holdsworth. Lee celebrating a new deal with Erebus Motorsport, multi-year arrangement. Mark Winterbottom, as we've detailed, his old teammate Will Davison alongside him. Rick Kelly, Jack Daniels Racing, he's got an onboard camera for us. David Wall, Wilson Security Racing, done a lot of driving here at Eastern Creek. Jack Perkins in the gel went forward. Dale Wood, Todd Kelly, Russell Ingle. Todd Kelly was involved with Garth Tandy yesterday in that issue down at turn two where Garth was docked some points and Craig Lowndes off the road in qualifying and he will start from position number 23 on the grid. He's third in the championship. Hey guys, uh, just an update on Shane Van Gisberg. I couldn't really say in front of him, but I did spy what he had on that steering wheel. He's got his target lap time, so he's written them down in white text on the black steering wheel, so he knows where he's aiming for. He's also written a small note there if we win tonight, we're going to Hooters for dinner tonight. So there you go. Simple as that. Yeah, but what was that target lap time, Barretts? What was the number? I can't remember. Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, well played. The reason they'll have the target lap time is he's starting on the soft tyres. So there's six of those top ten guys on the soft tyre. Fabian Coulthard, Nick Perkat, James Courtney, Winkup, Van Gisbergen and Bright. You can see that by the white side wall on the tyre and also by the orange light in the windscreen. So take note of that. You can see there in the lower of screen, Percat, Coulthard and Courtney. Then Winkup. Coming up to our 28th race of the championship season. Mega Wall. Scott McLaughlin's got an onboard camera. So is Rick Kelly, Jamie Winkup. What about Winkup's numbers? Extraordinary. Nine victories so far in the championship season. And look at what he's done previously. In 2008, he had 15. In 12, he had, uh, correction, 2012, he had 12 victories. In 13 and 2009, it was 11 victories. So he's building back towards those mega numbers in recent seasons. Neil, fascinating to watch these cars on the grid, the change of tyres from hard to soft. Remember when we show you that whiteboard strategy? That's what we call a base strategy. We sit around and try and nut out what we think the base is. And, of course, people are going to move from that. And the guys that have changed to softs, a couple of them will cover off their competitors. But the ones that put on soft now may choose to go quick early, get some track position and may pull them off straight away, put hards back on and put them on later in the race. Watch for that and then watch for the guys that just blaze off into the distance now and hope they don't get a safety car later. So McLaughlin will be under threat here. Coulthard's got a soft tyre. White sidewall. Voice of Tim Schenken, race director. Craig Lowndes at the rear of the field. Six drivers have got the Dunlop soft tyre on their cars. Totally different conditions to yesterday. They're on a different tyre in some cases. 200 kilometres, 120 litres of fuel to drop, a minimum of two pit stops, and we are racing. Fabian Coulthard immediately applies the grip. McLaughlin fights back, but James Courtney blazes into the lead at turn one. The local boy absolutely flying on the soft tyre and smashes them into the braking area at turn two. It's Courtney, McLaughlin, then Coulthard, then Winkup. Percat is in amongst it, then Van Gisbergen. I think that was Mostert that ran wide in the second of the Pepsi Max cars. Heaps of congestion as they round oh, turn three. Oh, that's going to be big. DJR cars has gone off into the weeds and in the wall. David Reynolds twice in two days together with Scott Pye. And what a disaster. This will trigger a safety car. And this will trigger pit stops because guys on soft tyres will come in and change them over probably. So this is going to be this is going to be out of control because it's so slippery off the track. It was fast. As soon as we saw Scott Pye so sideways, you could read immediately. If you made the grass, you were going to make the fence. And this is a fast yep, section yep. of road. The car on the exit of there is doing 150 kilometres an hour, Larko. Oh, mate, you should have seen this guy. There's a big screen here in front of the pits. All the pit guys were watching. As soon as that happened, the whole pit lane has come alive. I reckon every single team is out with a set of tyres. 
Oh, but Davey's check that been out. able to get it going. Have a look at the damage on the back of that car. My goodness. Thank goodness that fuel cell is forward of the uh, rear axle line in the car now because it completely taken the back off the car. Look at this. David Reynolds in the Botlow Ford entry. He's pulling left into the rear entrance here in the short shoot. And there's nothing on the back of that car. So now heaps of them come in. We've got Courtney, who was race leader, McLaughlin, Coulthard, Winkup, Percat, Van Gisbergen. They're all responding. Bright, Moffat. So far, every single driver in the field, Liner Stern has come in. Bright slowed them up because he had to, has to double stack. So he slowed them all up so that he doesn't have to double stack for BJR. And I think James Moffat was doing a bit of Morse code there as he would because he'd be frustrated. That's annoying. And it's a difficult one to regulate, but when someone slows you up, that's extremely frustrating. And you were right, that was Mostert who ran wide. He's actually behind his teammate now. So that's good for Winterbottom in terms of stacking. They're all coming in. Winterbottom's 12th, Mostert 13th. Congestion on departure, double stacking. Bright's going to pay a big price here. Every single operative car in the field is in the pit lane, bar those involved in the incident, Reynolds and Pye. I think and McLaughlin. Reynolds is actually at the top of the pit lane entrance at the moment. He's going to stumble by us very shortly, so he will get back to the lane. We'll just check this for you, but I think McLaughlin got by James Courtney, so... That was a good move there by the Volvo guys. Again, we're just going to check for you what happened in the tyre stakes, whether there was any change of compound at that stop. Yeah, remember that McLaughlin had gone away off the line on a hard tyre, immediately rounded up by Courtney on a soft tyre. We'll have to wait for the information to come to us to understand what the next play in that process is. Mostert goes out behind Jack Perkins. And problems here for Lowndes as he tries to find a way to integrate. He stalled. Yeah, some weekends just do not work, so listening. No going fired away. He's got to get back to the right of that cone marker. Because he's under the control of the safety car, it's not a big deal to get it back. Wow. I think that is shocking, isn't have it? Have a look at the damage. We said it's 150k. He might have been further up the road. So it may even be more like 160 or 170 kilometres an hour. The old 100 mile an hour limit. And look at that start for Courtney. Everyone on soft tyre got a great jump. But James Courtney in particular, around the outside of everybody. Jamie Winkup, great start also. Save with Van Gisberg and a Percat. Initially, I thought it was actually going to be Fabian that could go on with it. The secondary part of his start didn't work out nearly as well. This is on board. Here we go. I was just looking for who actually balked then on the way into the left-hander. This is Mark Winterbottom. And we go all the way down the bottom of the hill here. So he comes through turn one. This is super fast. Then the braking area. So around the outside we go. And off, off goes... Mostert, we think we're on board with Rick Kelly, sorry, and he's come out of turn one, out of the turn two, and you oh. see the two cars, they hooked up hard together, and you can see the two cars there, Pye and Dave Reynolds, firing off the road, you don't think you're going that fast there, because it's one of the slower sections of this track. And Mostert just completely outbraked himself down there on cold tyres and cold brakes, and then paid a big penalty. Yeah, for sure, we were on board then with Rick Kelly, because that was the car on your far right, three abreast and then just have a look here those two cars disappearing we'll get a really good view of this now so he gets a bump by Winterbottom that was actually Winterbottom that bumped Reynolds wow. who then bumped Pi. Pi had nowhere to go yep. absolutely no grip out there remember the rain we had yesterday that is drenched Watch so check this again yep for sure that was Mark Winterbottom into the back of Dave Reynolds who then escorted Ooh. Scott Pi wide both cars in and we need to point out that uh, they are from the same garage. The David Reynolds Botlow car is operated by Ford Performance Racing, owned by Rod Nash. So that'll put a bit of tension and stress in that garage. Yeah, you bet, Neil, just with Dave now. And that was a heavy hit. First thing, you're OK? Uh, yeah, I'm not too bad. I just wish they put a um, tyre barrier where the concrete fence was. It turned it into a Volvo. It's flattened it off a little bit. Uh, what happened? Uh, I don't know. I was going around turn three. I turned in, got a bit loose. Then someone spun me, someone turned me around and I was off the track and then in the fence. I had a very, very tough weekend this one's been. Uh, yeah, I, seem to, I can't get past that turn three. It's been a bugger for me all weekend. Go <laughs> no, rest up. We'll see you for the Endurance Cup. Thanks, man. He has had a shocking weekend, Dave Reynolds. He's been fast. In fact, he's been the fastest often of all the Ford guys in terms of his qualifying performance and the outright speed.
He said to me earlier today that he thought that wet race yesterday was as wild. He said he was scared to do anything, scared to touch the brake, scared to turn the wheel. It was so slippery. And he couldn't see. Yeah, that was the big issue. <laughs> Could not see. So McLaughlin has emerged in control of this field. Get an update for you on who's on what tyres. It's McLaughlin, Courtney, Percat, Stephen Johnson left. His dad, Dick Johnson, on the right. Stephen's been giving us a hand in the broadcast box here this weekend. Touring car champion and Bathurst winner, Dick Johnson. They will not want to consider the implications of the cost of a car going into that concrete wall and here's the reason why turn three so mark winterbottom gets into the right rear corner of david reynolds who then basically ricochets across and grabs the dick johnson racing entry bang just had nowhere to go now there was just nothing he could do about that so scotty pye who's been showing great form in the recent past remember his run at queensland raceway was brilliant only one spot away from a podium so Petters Chrysler safety car will come in at the end of this lap and we'll go racing once again, McLaughlin in control. But it'll be interesting to see what happens with the judicial system of this cropper because big championship implications for a bump with Winterbottom, who's currently second in the championship, 69 points adrift of Jamie Winkup. So he may get a drive through for that, who knows? So restart now, Scott McLaughlin on the hard tire, leads them away. We go racing once more. It's McLaughlin, Courtney, Percat, Winkup. One, two, three, and four. Lurking in the distance is Coulthard, Van Gisbergen. Tires have cooled out. Brakes have cooled out. They've got to rethink this once again and be a little careful. Coulthard runs a bit wide. That allows Giz down the inside. <laughs> he makes up for it because he breaks it so late. He ends up around the outside of Winkup under brakes. So good move, Fabian Coulthard. He made a mistake, but he was so bold under brakes. But he's just given Winkup a bump there through turn three. They make contact in the middle of turn three. He's not finished. VIP Pet Foods entry Van Gisbergen on the inside at turn four. The, ball, the brawl goes on through five. Coulthard's got the line now. Then Van Gisbergen. They open up the steering lock. Use all that extra apron area on departure through five. Highly congested at the back of the pack. Lowndes is trying to elbow his way through. I think Winkup may have changed tyres, Croppo. He's struggling there. So just check this. We'll find out for you. Because he looked like he really struggled for grip when Fabian Coulthard gave him a bump there at turn three. Yeah, there's, no, there's no illuminated light in the front of Winkup's car now, so they may have changed on to the hard tyre. This is a critical strategy choice. It's looking very yellow. So hard tyre on Winkup's car, we think. Investigation into cars 5 and 55 at turn 3, as Mark Scaife mentioned a few moments ago. Yeah, that's a hard tyre for sure on Winkup's car. It's a little margin now for McLaughlin over Courtney. And there's the other car involved in the incident at Turn 3, Scott Pye, Wilson Security Racing. And they've got that off the flatbed truck and they've taken it to the rear of the paddock area just next to the Dick Johnson Racing Transporter. And uh, the damage on the alternate car, the 55 car, is all at the rear. But for this car, it's all at the front. That'll be damage to the radiator, all the brake ducting, front suspension, front rails. That'll be a big job to repair that when you go head first into a concrete wall. As I said, I, I feel so sorry for Scott Pye there because he was just the innocent oh, bystander. There's no contact with Lowndes. Lowndes actually ends up being on the wrong side of it there. He manages to avoid, but there was a bit of silliness in front. They ricocheted into him and forced him off the road. And that was Dale Wood. And yeah, Todd Kelly. So that was the two guys, they were having a battle. And Lowndes was caught with that, which is a little bit what I was saying about Scott Pye. He was just driving around the outside. So here we go. So this is Dale Wood into the back of Todd Kelly, gives him a serve, pushes him wide and sideways. So then Todd decides to escort Dale Wood wide as the entry for five. He just didn't know that Craig Lowndes was on the outside three abreast. There's a critical moment in our championship. Mark Winterbottom has been adjudged for making a driving error at turn three, lap one of this race. He's hit his own teammate. He'll pay the penalty with a drive through in pit lane.
Yeah, now just with Tim Edwards now. Tim, look, I know nothing turns your stomach like teammate contacting teammate, but what do you make of that decision on Mark Witterbottom? Well, I totally disagree with it because I can't tell. I mean, yeah, of course Mark hit him, but what we don't know without seeing the in-car footage and everything from both cars is whether Dave turned across in front of him. I mean, yeah, they're both teammates, but, you know, it's inexcusable to make a decision like that without all the facts. All right, mate, thank you. Tim Edwards, team principal, Pepsi Max Ford Performance Racing. That'll make for an interesting debrief next week. Well, the fortunate thing that happens with this is if you do have a call that goes against you like this, you've still got the whole race to make this back. So a safety car, it's only six laps into a 51k, 200 kilometer event. If he comes in and does the drive through, gets himself organized, and is able then for the rest of the day to work his way forward. It, it, I know it's a bad penalty, I know it's a pretty savage penalty based on the bump. At the same time, he's got the rest of the race to make it to the front again. So he won't be happy about it. This is critical. So we're just focusing on the tyres here and uh, just verifying that it is a hard tyre that's gone on to Jamie Wincup's car came in on the white wall tyre. That's the soft. Yep. There's the yellow. Doesn't get any better than that. Crystal clear pictures from above. Larko. Yeah, I was just going to say I was having a chat to Roland Dane. Uh, absolutely, they uh, put the hard tyres on. In fact, I saw everyone change tyres. I don't think there's uh, any soft tyres out there at the moment. What's interesting too, you might also wonder why everyone came through the pit lane, as Mark Winterbottom does right in front of me. Um, remember I said we had to put 120 litres in, so everyone had to use the opportunity. That's why you don't start with a full tank of fuel. Everyone jabbed as much fuel as they could fit in it right there. Yeah, it gets rid of part of that requirement, doesn't it? And uh, I reckon you're right, we've had a scan of the field and we can't see anybody on a soft tyre at the moment. So they've ticked off the regulatory part of that in some cases with the soft tyre. Those There were six of them at the start of the race that used it. Winterbottom has now served his pit lane drive through penalty. He's got a lot of time to recover, as Mark Scaife explained a few moments ago. We're going to take a break now. Our leaderboard looks like this. It is Scott McLaughlin over James Courtney, Nick Perkat, Jamie Wincup, followed by Fabian Coulthard, Shane Van Gisberg and James Moffat, Garth Tander, then Will Davison and Jason Bright. That is your top ten. We're back in a moment. It's lap nine, and we've got a 200k race unfolding this afternoon that promises a lot. 
Mega Wall's got it covered for you on the track, the pit lane, the curb cams on the main straight, looking in and around race control where they've already had to activate a safety car once today and we've got nine different cars with onboard cameras and we've got some great battles going on in the field. Scotty McLaughlin is your race leader, just over a second margin from James Courtney. And how about this one? This is intense. James Moffat, Shane Van Gisbergen and Garth Tander. These fellas are arguing six, seven and eight at the moment. And they've been exchanging very, very consistent lap times between them. Just behind them is Jason Bright. And it was a great pass then. James Moffat fired down the inside of Van Gisbergen at turn two. Got that manoeuvre made without contact and has now, in that lap, snuck away by about three or four tenths of a second on Van Gisbergen. So he's showing good pace, currently sixth. See in the background here, this was a good move. Gillette Mac 3 replay picks up the Norton Altima. Nice bit of braking, nice stability through turn one. And now we pick up on the back of Jamie Winkup, Fabian Coulthard, 250 starts. And this is a very fast corner. Percat also that's just snuck position, by so Courtney. That's yeah, a good move. That's up to position two. And uh, he's really clicked, hasn't he, in the recent past. Nick Perkett's done a nice job. Been one or two flashes of brilliance in the early part of his V8 supercar career. Remember, he was a Bathurst winner with Garth Tander a few years ago. But from Townsville onwards, he's really been hammering along in this heavy haulage Australia car. This is from the same outfit from Walkinshaw Racing. He had to just squeak through there at turn one. That's a big, brave move down there. Not easy to do because by going to the inside, you tighten up turn one. So, by definition, it just makes it that much harder to get through. And Check this. James only, in fact, oh. James did... Uh, does that sound on the... Sounds track? like it's on seven cylinders. <laughs> Something with some weird sound, I reckon, well, coming from James Courtney's car. Yeah, James didn't make it super easy for him, but they're approaching that corner, just bending on the wind, tyre quality, 270 kilometres an hour at peak value. He's got a drama. That's a transmission drama for Courtney. There's something wrong with it. And it's either or on seven drama. cylinders. It's broken a header. Hey, or it's on seven, the seven cylinders. Hey, it's gone. It's had it. Yeah. It won't, it's not it's not up shifting either, so he's had a transaxle fail. <laughs> Robbie's saying, keep going, mate. I've had him say that to me too, but at some point, yeah, look at the vibration and the oil that's coming out of it. Look at the vibe. Camera can't pick it up there because and the whole car's vibrating. That now explains the reason why Nick was able to get a run on him down there in the previous lap. So that's Ooh. shocking. So it's eating itself alive, the Holden Racing Team car. Drops to position three at the moment, 34-4 for James Courtney. They're going to have to pack this one up because it's, it's actually dropping oil over its own rear tyres there at the moment. You can see how difficult it was to get into turn four. You can see the oil coming out of it a second ago. Yep, you can see the trail of it there. And this oh. is the reason why Fabian Coulthard has uh, had the big moment there at turn eight. And as I speak, the race director, Tim Schenken, has had reports from our flag marshals that there's oil being dropped by that car. So in a moment, if they don't do something at the Holden Racing Team, race control are going to react and they'll drag that car in anyway. So Fabian runs wide. He protected the tyres in the process. He did. It didn't seem as though he put a flat spot on. Just ran a little bit wide, had a momentary lock-up. So James now in a pile of trouble. Nearly got drilled then by James Moffat. Yeah. So this thing will be struggling to get back. There's oil everywhere. It's online because James didn't realise there was oil coming out of that car for the last lap and a half. So it, see, it sounds like it seized the transaxle. So Robbie's just saying, put it somewhere safe, put it over on the left-hand side, away from all the traffic. It's a great shame. Have a look at this. There's oil being sprayed. That's oh. the view that Jamie Wincup's getting at the moment. And the wiper typically doesn't do much to help it other than spread it. So that's a real drama there for Wind Cup. That's going to really compromise his afternoon. So massive amount of oil, transmission oil, on the windscreen of Wind Cup's car and a transaxle failure at the Holden Racing Team for James Courtney, who was a winner at Queensland Raceway. So it's McLaughlin, Percat, Wind Cup. Wind Cup vulnerable because he can't see and Moffat behind him at the moment. But they're doing late 35s, Crompo. It's about two and a half seconds slower than it was prior to the oil coming out. Yeah, so the track's greasy, but we know the place hurts tyres as well. Courtney's not happy. 
There's his engineer, Robbie Starr. Very frustrating. We'll come back to Eastern Creek in a moment. It's a great incentive for James Moffat, knowing the information that he's getting from his crew that Jamie Wincup's vision is compromised by the oil on his screen. There's James in the Nissan Altima for Norton. That little Hornet is stinging along there at the moment in fourth position and on for a third if he can force a gap. Now remember also that Wincup has the benefit in his next stop of being able to pluck a tear off away from the screen. You can see that yellow tab in the top right hand corner of Jamie's windscreen. It's a plastic tear-off like you'd use on a motorcycle visor. If you're familiar with what you'd use on motocross goggles or something of that nature, you can remove them. And so they've got layers of them on the car for this very reason when debris builds up. So at the next stop, Red Bull Racing Australia will take that off and that'll sort out the vision. It's actually got a little bit better now for Jamie anyway, but he's still struggling. And James now puts on a nice move down the inside cleanly. Jamie didn't bother to fight. Smart play by both of them. And Moffat now moves up to position three and sets off after Nick Perkat. Perkat's just doing a mighty job, boys. Qualified and finished in the top ten. Five of the last six races as we came into this weekend. In other words, Townsville and Queensland Raceway. He's been on fire. Here he is, Heavy Haulage Australia. He's only 1.4 seconds behind McLaughlin. His form's been consistent. It's been fast. And he's showing it today. Bolted, bolted back up the lane, James Courtney. Yep. What happened out there? What's the damage? Um, I think it's gearbox. Uh... So transaxial gearbox. Yeah, I think so. It happened really early on. So with about two laps after the uh, after the stop, we started to lose shifts and uh, I could smell it. The engine wasn't pulling, so we knew something was wrong. It was just a matter of time, and then it uh, hand grenaded itself. So uh, pretty disappointing. We had a really quick car. Just cruising around behind Scotty and looking after it, and um, it's a shame. It's probably one that got away. Um, home Grand Prix at that out west, so it's uh, yeah. Sorry to all the fans, but uh, we're one HRT car down for the afternoon. Well, I don't know if you could hear it, but you got a great cheer as you ran back along pit lane. Hey, we'll see you at Sandown, JC. All the best. We'll be there. Cheers, guys.
Yeah, it was bad luck there for JC, but I'll just quickly show you. We talked about a gearbox failure. Remember in the old days, so here's our engine, which is still sort of in there somewhere. Here, right? The gearbox used to be there. It's no longer there. We have a tail shaft goes all the way down there, and we have a thing down there called a transaxle, which is the differential and the gearbox all in one. So that all would have been flowing all the way out of there. Now, very quickly, I'll show you. Remember we showed you the strategy graph at the start, the base strategy. Now, we had that really early safety car. Everyone came in, the guys that started on softs, quickly put their hards on, got some fuel in. That's really, really important. Now, I said, because I think at the moment we're on about lap 14 or 15, we're in here somewhere. Remember, 18. Now, I know some teams got enough fuel in that they could come in here and fill up and make it all the way home. So look for a safety car, 18 to 30, somewhere in there. And what I'm going to be interested to see if the guys put these softs back on and try and make it all the way home, or if it's early, they may have to put the hards on to go that distance. Mark Larkham in the tech centre bringing us up to date on strategy. We're on lap 15. This is a great battle pack here. Look at it. 16th Jack Perkins. I saw him slithering as Mark Larkham was talking a few moments ago. Still on some of that oil. It does soak quite quickly. And those hot tyres that are around about 90 odd degrees or more uh, quickly disperse it, soak it up. And then the track will clean up again. But it's just still a bit iffy in a couple of places at the moment. So Jack's got pressure from Lee Holdsworth. Craig Lowndes is here trying to forge a path as well. Remember, he's trying to recover from that terrible qualifying. Lee gets down the inside of Jack. Nice move. Lowndes thinks about it. No space on the inside and it's Dale Wood just tucked in behind them. Further back, we've got Mark Winterbottom in 20th. And he's at the tail of the field given that Courtney Reynolds and Pye are now out of business. And Lowndes' car sliding massively through the exit of turn three. Sniffs down the inside again at four. We'll take the opportunity to have a quick break. From Sydney Motorsport Park, Eastern Creek will come back. Scotty McLaughlin's your leader. 2.3 seconds is the gap. Lap 18 of this 200k race this afternoon and still a clear blue sky and I don't think the rain threat is really going to come but we've got a great battle going on here at the moment between Tander and Bright. Jason Bright got a nice run on Garth Tander off the final corner on the last lap. He had a look down the inside at turn one but he wasn't able to do it. These fellas are arguing over seventh and eighth. Old war horses. 
Jason Bright coming into the weekend, 470 V8 supercar races. And the guy that he's racing has done 501 of them coming into the weekend. They've had another couple since then yesterday. They've done a lot of V8 supercar racing together. They've locked horns one or two times as well. They're both hard men. They don't muck about. They will not make it easy for each other. We saw some telltale smoke from the back of Michael Caruso's car a couple of laps ago. He did put a move, however, on his teammate, Rick Kelly. He has gone up to 10th, and Bright now gets the run. As they head towards the eastern end of the track, Tanda has to yield, and Jason Bright gets the job done. Moves up to 7th. That was a nice move. He had great pace yesterday, but for various reasons, they, they didn't quite capitalise. They didn't get their tyre pressures right. Early yesterday, Jason Bright, he had a problem at the start when he stalled. He had to throw it down the inside then. He locked it up briefly. Look at GT arguing the case. Here's the onboard. Remember, Jason's carrying an onboard for us today. This is turn eight. He actually rattled on the door. That's the reason why Garth didn't do him any favours on the exit. They've had a bit of history this year. They have. <laughs> That's why I wanted to make that point. So. Uh, Caruso, we saw that smoke before, but no evidence now, but just uh, tidying up that point. He did pass Rick Kelly, and uh, Rick was talking about his car being far too pointy and uh, too loose, sliding around too much in the rear. Yeah, boys, just wanted to have a quick chat with Scott Pye. He is back in the garage. The car is not very good, and you yourself are a little ginger after that hit. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, that's uh, obviously a big chunk that we didn't didn't need, not for the boys or for me. Obviously, I'm going to be sore for a couple of days after that. But, I mean, it, I think it was uh, it was pretty clear cut what happened there. It looks like Frosty just just punted Reynolds and uh, and Reynolds got into my front wheel and it just sent me straight. Obviously, with the wet grass, there's no, no hope of slowing it down or anything like that. But fortunately, you know, obviously, Reynolds, uh, sorry, Winterbottom got a drive through straight away for it. And, uh, I mean, obviously, our day's done, so I'm pretty disappointed. You have spent some time in the medical centre. No serious injuries, but you are very sore. Yeah, exactly. The, I mean, the belts have, have taken some skin off and uh, and obviously my groin was the worst part. Um, but, yeah, I mean, obviously there'll be a few days where I'll be a bit tender, but try and get it fixed up and, and obviously bounce back at Sandown. Hopefully my break will come soon. Rest up. We look forward to seeing you at the Perth Tech Enduro Cup. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Good to see that he's all OK, though. Scott Pye having a chat to Rihanna Crean. Now, we've got uh, more evidence of tyre rubbing on Michael Caruso's car. Symantec livery on this vehicle this weekend. It... Yes, it is, Michael. <laughs> yeah, we can answer that for you. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck hearing us. But, uh, yeah, it's only evident in a couple of spots out there at the moment, but he'll be smelling that in the cockpit, and he'll probably catch glimpses of it in the mirrors as well. Uh, he, at the moment, is in ninth position. He's got Will Davison just behind him. Erebus have had pretty good speed this weekend. Bright ran wide at two, much wider than he wanted to be. He's only just cleared Tanda. And if he leaves too much of a gap like that, he'll lose the spot again. Now, Tanda's actually vulnerable to Michael Caruso here. Michael's got pace despite the telltale smoke. So the order at the moment, 3.4 seconds the gap between McLaughlin and Percat. Then it's Moffat, Wincup, Van Gisbergen, Coulthard, Bright, Tanda, Caruso, and Will Davison is inside the 10. Quite a mix of cars. And of the top 10, there's not much in it in terms of what fuel they've got to put on, Neil. So... We think in our corrected order at the moment that Winkup might be slightly better off than Moffat in terms of his fuel film. Around one second difference of fuel film time. But that's not much in terms of the track position at the moment because Moffat has a one and a half second lead over Winkup. So there's going to be nothing in it when this next stop happens, which will be very close. We're almost at the time now, which Mark Larkham explained, that the safety car period, the critical lap is looming. Garth Tan has got a brand new car this weekend. It was christened with some damage yesterday when he locked horns with Todd Kelly down at turn two. Meantime, battle going on here between the Kiwis, Van Gisbergen and Coulthard. These fellas are disputing fifth and sixth at the moment. Michael Caruso said to me before the start of the race that the car balance on hard tyres is fantastic. It was tending towards oversteer on the soft tyres. He was a bit frustrated in qualifying because the first half of the lap was terrific. The second half, it started to slide too much in the rear. He's a bit frustrated, so he qualified 12th. He's doing a nice job out there at the moment, Caruso, in ninth position, so he's made genuine ground. The car is behaving very well on those hard tyres. Still staggered by Van Gisbergen telling me that they didn't change the car at all for the wet yesterday, and that speaks volumes to his driving. Will Davison on board with him, the right-hander at turn four. It's a great corner. This one, however, is not. It's a really weird corner in its shape. I reckon I've been round it 800,000 times, and 799,999 of those times I've gone, that's not much fun. <laughs> oh, he's gone! 
That was a spin for Tanda. Now, whether he got a little bump or not, who knows? Because that was a, it's been a place all weekend that we've seen some movement. We've seen some guys try the dive on going into turn six. We saw there was some close stuff going on there with Caruso and Tanda. I reckon Michael might have given him a little bump. So Michael might be in a little bit of trouble. Tanda's complaining about it on the radio. So let's see how that one unfolds. Coming out of turn five, we've seen all weekend. There you go. You can just see it from Will Davidson's car now. So this is Caruso six. down the inside. Yep. It's been contact. Just giving you a bump and turned him around. We've seen out of five, everyone running very wide and then them trying to get a slingshot down the inside. Now, whether Michael was up far enough, hard to tell from the vision that we've got so far, but the Gillette Mac 3 replay certainly shows Garth Tander at that stage. Turn around backwards at turn six. Frustrating for Tander. That's uh, twice in a couple of days that he's found himself off the racetrack or pointing in the wrong direction. And uh, disappointment also for Nissan Motorsport, no doubt. But we've seen, I think, a genu genuine improvement in pace in the recent uh, race meetings. But for various reasons, they're not able to close those deals at the moment. And uh, we've got to find a way to do that. We've got to find a way not to be involved in those sorts of incidents to accumulate points. And I even read a story at one point recently about learning to win again. Very important at the moment. No doubt. I mean, Ipswich was the classic example, wasn't it? Caruso battling for the lead with McLaughlin. Makes contact, puts himself out. We'll take another break. Coach High leaderboard, Scotty McLaughlin. 4.2 seconds is the number. We're riding on board with him. He's got Nick Perkat in pursuit. Then it's James Moffat, Jamie Winkup, Shane Van Gisbergen, Coulthard, Bright, Caruso, Davison, and then Rick Kelly. Back soon. There's our race leader. He's got a four and a half second lead. It'll be a post-race investigation in that incident we saw before at turn six. It was unclear from the angle that we had and unclear to race control as well. So the Tanda Caruso incident will be investigated. Our race highlights so far, there's been quite a few, hasn't there? Initially, we thought that Coulthard had the jump. Remember, he had the soft tyre on, but it was James Courtney that shot 
off the second row of the grid and was just blazing. Chas Mostert ran wide down here at turn two and then came back on about another 50 metres up the road and all hell broke loose. And unfortunately, there was contact between Mark Winterbottom, David Reynolds and ultimately Scott Pye, resulting in Reynolds clipping the front of Scott Pye's car. And that's very significant nose contact in the concrete there. But fortunately, all the drivers are OK but that can't be uh, said for their cars. Triggered everybody into the pit lane to get some fuel in, and in some cases to change tyres. Todd Kelly, Dale Wood, Craig Lowndes. Lowndes is recovering from very poor qualifying after a mistake. James Moffat has been racing, put a nice move on Shane Van Gisbergen down at turn two. The Nissans generally have had very good pace today. James Courtney then, we all of a sudden caught some noise in the background in his onboard camera and a transaxle fail, gearbox drama for him, Adrian Burgess in the Holden Racing Team bunker, Anthony McDonald in the background there acknowledging his boss, James had to pull off, Rob Starr the engineer, head down, frustration for them, whenever you've got a quick car and you've got to pull off the racetrack, that hurts. Moffat continues to march forward because Jamie Wincup's screen was absolutely covered in oil as a result of James Courtney's problems. This is Jason Bright down the inside at turn eight on Garth Tander, gives him a little wake up call in the door. And then a problem as Michael Caruso tried to put a move on the inside of Garth Tander. Unclear as to who did what to who there as we go inside the garage at Walkinshaw Racing. Coats Hire leaderboard's got the margins for you. It's uh, just a little over four and a half seconds now. McLaughlin to Percat, then Moffat, Wincup, Van Gisbergen. This is Craig Lowndes. He's made some ground. He's up to 14th at the moment. Meantime, Winterbottom, who's also racing hard in this championship, is down in 19th. His engineer, Campbell Little, said a couple of moments ago, another six or seven laps on these tyres. Drive it very, very hard. All you've got, so a couple of laps will have passed since I heard that remark. So we're starting to gear up now for another series of stops here. This is Lowndes putting big pressure on Todd Kelly. On the... Uh, to the main straight, which also becomes a bit problematic at this time of day. You can see the amount of sun on the cars. They're running very deep windscreen strips. Have a go at Todd just covering down the inside here as uh, Craig tries to go around the outside. It's almost impossible to do. And uh, that's Lowndes reacting. Stay <laughs> cool. Uh, now, Craig's got to be... He's having one of those weekends at the moment. The last thing he needs to do is have a sense of humour failure and have the circuit breaker pop out and then get involved in another incident this weekend. He's just going to have to play it cool. Well, there's also a bit of history there. I mean, Craig yeah. Lowndes was the Holton Racing Team lead driver when Todd came in as a young lion, and, you know, the, the guys have raced against each other and quasi-teammates for a while, and there's a bit of history there. And straight away when Lowndes had that little kerfuffle with Todd at Turn 1, and straight away he said, oh, you can't do that, JJ. So there's, a, as I said, a little bit of attitude that comes with the weekend that he's having, plus a little bit of history, Larko. Hey, how quick do these guys get into it? This is Davey Reynolds' car back in his garage. Now, have a look. They've plucked the rear off the car. They've plucked what we call the C-pillars off the car. And if you come down here, let's get down and dirty and in amongst it. You can see uh, the boys were talking about the fuel cell. So previously, the fuel cell would have been here. But that's it way down in there. See that carbon box there? It's in behind that. Yeah. Very, very good. This subframe here, and here's what we talked about. Remember the transaxle? So that's the differential in there with the gearbox just in front of it. It's all one component, which is the transaxle. And you can see the real damage on this car is in these rails. You can see they're all bent. And Dave, if you just come with me in the back door here, the really critical thing, they'll go back and put this car on a jig now, is to make sure that point there doesn't move. That's where your shock absorber bolts in, down in underneath that. And that's very important to the structural integrity of the car, the torsional stiffness that that's not moved. So we're seeing people react now. Thanks, Larko, for the update. It's remarkable. It certainly looked worse, didn't it, until they started to peel all the dead panels off it. We'll see David back in action at Sandown in uh, mid-September. So Bright's come in, and we saw that Craig Lowndes had had enough of that battle with Todd Kelly, so he's come in as well. And I think that was a good thing, because that was not very far away from erupting. Chaz Mostert has come in too. This is the undercut. So the first car is to get onto the soft tyre. Make lap speed straight away, you get a gain for this. However, you've got to be a little bit careful how you play that card. You get the undercut, but you're on the tyres for longer. And they're all acutely aware of these games. Mostert processed, tear off done on Lowndes' car. So now, it's how fast do you drive the car at the start of this run. No one knows in this field 
how long the soft tyre will last. They're all pioneers. To get onto them early makes lap speed. At the end of the race, if you're on them for longer, this is one of the hardest circuits in Australia on tyres. You will be slow at the end if you don't look after them. And sometimes there can be confusing counterpoints in tyre discussions because occasionally in our business, a softer tyre, because of tyre compound and construction suitability, sometimes matches the track a little better. And because it doesn't slide as much as the hard tyre, it could confound everybody and suddenly run a little bit longer or a little more uh, durable than it might otherwise appear on paper. And as Mark's saying, this is the stuff we don't know until you know it. They're actually going to learn now. Remember, we've had a couple of test days here with the new generation car. We've not raced it. We certainly haven't run the soft tyre. The other aspect of this is you can't afford not to go with them. So if your car's good on tyres, the smart move is to come in early and do it because it forces the field onto your strategy. So you can't afford to be five or ten laps away from these guys in terms of strategy. You've got to come and do it because the undercut will deliver you two seconds a lap roughly at the start of this run. Caruso, Davison, Wall, Todd Kelly, Russell Ingall. They're the guys in the lane getting processed at the moment. If you've only just uh, joined our coverage, we lost James Courtney early on, David Reynolds early on, and Scott Pye. Reynolds and Pye were involved in an incident that was triggered by Mark Winterbottom, it seems. And that's going to be uh, discussed, no doubt, in great detail post-race. There's another incident under review. Uh, Michael Caruso, Garth Tander, down at, at turn six. These guys have got to do it, Neil. You've got to come and, you've got to come and do it. Exactly. And, and well done. Are. They are. So you've just got to respond because the reality, Moffat's also done it. So that's great news. Now, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Scott McLaughlin and Nick Perkett because at the moment, McLaughlin, Perkett and Winkup, first three cars, have not responded to the undercut. Very similar fuel amounts for the two cars that you can see on the left of your screen. So it'll be a battle between the efficiency of the crews here, not so much the amount of fuel that needs to be delivered. And uh, how hard, as Mark said before, do you run on these tyres now? It's a pretty wide window to the end of this race. You want to go a, bit, a little bit gently. Sometimes, Neil, it's better to drive them a little slower at the start of these runs and look after the tyre so that you, you don't get the level of degradation later. Looks like that, 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 yeah, that's Moffat's state of position. These guys, that's been a jump for Fabian because Fabian was behind Van Gisbergen before the stop, so he's moved in front of Shane. He's Winterbottom. United E85 fuel going in at the rate of about three and a half There's the undercut. Second. And uh, Bright's made it good, so he's made a genuine gain there. One of the things they've typically been pretty good at doing down at Brad Jones Racing is reading those situations well. So that there is the yield that you get on a soft tyre whilst the other guys were still on the hard tyre. So Bright coming in early, goes out on the soft tyre, one of the first guys to do it, took a punt, has made great lap speed and has now come by. This is the undercut, this is the benefit of getting onto the soft tyre early, which is exactly this example. Wind cups in from position three. But the risk here now is just how hard does Bright push in these early laps because he can't afford to eat too much out of the tyre or the gain that he just grabbed and that we witnessed gets quickly evaporated. Now, wind cup. So we're going to check this because he'll need to fix this windscreen. Remember, we saw it earlier. We're on board. He's done a pretty good job considering that view that you can see on the top right of your screen. It's actually fundamentally a mistake from Jamie to try to wipe that windscreen when it's like that. When you've got oil on the screen, you can't touch the wiper. That let there be light. Yes, fixed. <laughs> Look at the difference. Amazing, isn't it? And a western sun here. So when you get to the end of the straight, it's always problematic. That sun there at the end of the main straight, very difficult for turn one. That'll make a huge difference to him. Impressive, low heart rate chat at Red Bull Racing Australia. No urgency in the voices. Look at this little battle here. Wind Cup's going to emerge right in the middle of it on a cold tyre, right with Fabian Coulthard. It'll be hard to battle on the cold tyre. Fabian tries to cover him. Jamie goes Gets with it. the argument. Fabian clears him in the end. Nice and tight, that one. And that's again the example. Both those guys have made track position. And here comes McLaughlin into the pit lane while this little battle rages. Look at Bright trying to cover. 
See, Bright already has lost some of that margin that we saw. It's because the guys behind him are on a younger tyre. Bright's vulnerable. Oh! He's got Moffat down the inside. They're shoulder to shoulder through the left-hander at five. Jason Bright is running out of space. They'll be three wide when they get down to the left-hander. Coulthard on the inside. This could get sticky. Great Moffat driving. emerges. Moffat, Coulthard, Bright. Jason Bright all of a sudden finds himself out of rhythm and he's now vulnerable to Jamie Wincup. Great driving, James Moffat and Fabian Coulthard. That was very, very good. Jason Bright did a good job to allow the track position for Moffat. Moffat got down there, but so did Fabian. They didn't make contact. That easily could have escorted both guys off the road. So just reiterating that you saw McLaughlin in the lane there. You've got Nick Perkett parked in there on the right-hand side of screen. Here's Coulthard again with Moffat. It's still going on at the top end of the circuit. You need eyes in all directions at the moment. And there's a little bit of a cleansing moment coming where the field's all going to find the same spot in the road down here at turn one. Side by side, Nissan on the outside, Holton on the inside. It's Moffat oh. versus Coulthard. Who's the bravest down the inside into one? They're doing 270 kilometres an hour. Oh. What a moment for James Moffat. A big mid-corner correction in the Nissan. Look at this angry pack of cars. What fantastic racing. That was a monstrous moment then for Moffat. He bumped the inside kerb. It fired sideways on him. It was probably water. It was probably over the back of the kerb there, quite slippery. You could see the body language of the car. Great job here at the moment for McLaughlin and Percat because they've come out still with enough gap to this angry pack that are battling for third Position. It's about half a dozen cars here, all arguing over a spot on the podium. So McLaughlin and Percat have used the advantage that they had very nicely, thank you very much. And they've got younger tyres now than the guys that they're racing. They've been able to stay on the racetrack and continue to play their advantage that they've got in setup on the hard tyre. That's worked very well for them. The situation is McLaughlin leads at the moment from Percat. We're going to take a break, check it out on the Coats Hire leaderboard. McLaughlin, Percat, Coulthard, James Moffat. How's this moment here? The super slow-mo replay. James has got it in the grass. It's a bit of rally cross there as he fires it sideways. Come back and join us in a moment.
The gap is 5.5 seconds. Scott McLaughlin to Nick Perkett. It's lap 33 of 51. 200 kilometres of racing at Sydney Motorsport Park, Eastern Creek. Scott McLaughlin just easing into it at the moment, looking after these tyres, and that will be the story of the back end of this race. It's a shootout between the entire field as to how they'll manage the Dunlop soft tyre all the way to the chequered flag. The sun setting down there at turn one makes braking references very difficult. We'll check these gaps for you so we can understand what they look like. McLaughlin to Percat. There it is. Car triple two. Heavy haulage Australia. Then this raging battle for the miners at the moment. Coulthard leads it for Lockwood Racing. James Moffat having a cracking race. Then Jason Bright, Jamie Wincup, Shane Van Gisbergen. Two wins yesterday and Michael Caruso next. And then another gap back to Will Davis. And Chas Mostert into the fastest lap of the race. Craig Lowndes making ground. Rick Kelly, David Wall, then Lee Holdsworth, Garth Tander and then Todd Kelly is the car on the left-hand side of screen. And that gets you back to position number 16 in the race. And then another big margin back to Dale Wood. From Dale Wood, we then go Russell Ingle. Actually, uh, Winterbottom's just grabbed that spot up at the top end of the track. So Mark Winterbottom now over uh, Russell Ingle. That gets us all the way back to 19th position. So the man that's been leading the majority of the championship in the recent past, Mark Winterbottom, he is having a shocker. Terrible, isn't it? I mean, when things are bad in this game, just tends to exaggerate all the things that are part of the sport and how that affects your run on the day. Clearly the bump that he had with Dave Reynolds early, then the drive-through penalty, then really his speed in the middle part of the race was quite good. If he was up with the front guys, he probably would have been on par with the guys from fifth or sixth back in terms of his actual outright speed but he just can't show the speed. Now, everyone's on a good tyre. He's in 18th position, and Wink Up is sixth. Now, remember also there's a cloud hanging over Michael Caruso in position eight at the moment, car number 36 for the contact with Garth Tander at turn six. We're riding here with Will Davison in the Erebus Motorsport AMG Mercedes-Benz. He's running down this big, long, fast main straight. Grab six gear, it's 270 kilometres an hour. It's a perfect opportunity for us to crank it up, sit back and enjoy the lap. Eastern Creek Wave Race or Sydney Motorsport Park. Let's bust it open a little bit. Here come the guys now. Now that blue brake mark you can see there, that's about 100 metres. They come past there, side by side. Look at this, fantastic. 270 kilometres an hour. Now what I want you to see, look at the brake lights on the car. This is what we call trail braking. The cars come in here, six gear. They go down to fifth gear at 270 k's an hour. Remember it's 205, look for the brakes. Look at the brake lights, look, trail braking. Really important when you get mid-corner, get to the apex, is you transition from the brake to the throttle really smoothly and you don't want too much of what we call coasting, where you're not on the brake and you're not on the throttle. You want to keep the car really balanced because at 200 kilometres an hour, having the car do all of this one is not nice at all. It's a great corner, isn't it, Larko? Thanks for the explanation. It's absolutely fantastic. Very rewarding in the driving seat. High-speed approach, fast-sweeping left-hander. We've got a 4.8 second margin, McLaughlin to Percat. 
It's a great battle, and they're going on up and down the field. We'll take another break and be back at Eastern Creek in a moment. Who's got the firepower in terms of rubber in the closing stages of this race? Welcome back to Sydney Motorsport Park, Eastern Creek. We're on lap 38 of 51. McLaughlin's got a 4.8 second margin. It's Volvo over Holden at the moment. Nick Perkat in second, Fabian Coulthard in third. There's the provisional points. Jamie Wincup on screen at the moment is currently sitting sixth on the road, but the news is all good in terms of his championship because he's opening up the margin. We came to the weekend with a 15 point gap. It was 117 points when I saw it up there a moment ago. So his consistency is impressive. And yesterday he opened up the margin as well. Didn't have a car strong enough to win. Mind you, didn't stop him trying very hard in the wet. But if he can't win, he and that team bright enough at the moment to make sure that they can put together good, strong averages and keep scoring points. Meantime, the new fastest lap of the race just set by Fabian Coulthard. A 1 minute 31.9. Fabian's in position three at the moment. Very late in the day for that. There's just been a little bit of cloud cover around the track. That'll have smartened it up. And check this out on the Gillette replay. The irony here is that Will Davison on the right in the AMG entry is battling his old car from Ford Performance Racing, Chas Mostert at the helm. And uh, Will fed him across to the left-hand side of the road, held his ground. Good to see that the continual engine development for the boys at Erebus has kept them in good stead in a straight line because they haven't been giving too much away here. Look at this, very, very close. And the battle's gone on and on and on. Here is again from another angle. So watch this. Will just spots him, feeds him across to the left. How do you fancy a nice tight run into turn one, young Chaz? Chaz has got the eyes on there. And they both got away with it. Very impressive driving from both men. Here's our race leader. I don't think Will Davison really liked the little bump that got all that started, so that was what the repayment was of moving him over like that. We're on board with the leader, and Scott McLaughlin's being coaxed along with Richard Holway on the radio, saying, just drive it to the gap, mate, drive it to the gap. So it's 4.87 seconds. They're driving it to a five-second gap. We're on board. This is foot cam. That's not a jandle. That's a race boot. Yeah. Flat shifting, so no lifting of the throttle. 
little micro switch on the gear lever just interrupts the drive to the powertrain so that it can get out of one gear and get into the next. There's a big brake application in the heel and toe. Back to second gear for turn two. Richard Holway, who was Scotty McLaughlin's engineer, we're just watching his great footwork. Hey, Richard, I don't want to put it on you, mate, but, but how good is this kid? I mean, you know, the pressure of this weekend, there's been lots of downs. You know yourself, to manage a car in this race and have that lead is not easy. No, he's doing a great job, mate. Absolutely brilliant. No, we're just trying to, obviously, Queensland, we had a few tie-life issues and we're just trying to manage it to the end here, so... I don't know how Coulthard's, uh, what sort of pace Coulthard's going to have when he gets past, but yeah, we'll do the best we can. All right, mate. Hey, can I ask you one quick question? So, Mark Scaife, who works with us, one of the greatest ever. You've worked with him. You've been his engineer. Different young bloke. Um, how does he compare, though? I mean, do you think this guy's going to go and have similar success? Oh, absolutely. I mean, he, yeah, he's, I mean, as you know, mate, he's got all the, all the attributes, you know. It's, it's all there, and he's... Yeah, he's just doing a fantastic job. Well, I reckon coming from you, mate, there's nothing sure. So good luck. Cheers, mate. Richard Holway on screen there inside the Volvo bunker with Mark Larkham. Mark Scase won 10 races at this location, and Richard Holway would have been with you on many occasions to enjoy that success, and he speaks very highly of this young man on screen. He is holding that margin. He's just opened it up ever so slightly now. It's five seconds for McLaughlin. Remember yesterday, they had a very tough day. They lost an engine, they lost a wheel, they did get a pole position, but in the end they got nothing for their trouble. This is Lowndes putting a move on and actually squeaking through into the top 10. So that's on Will Davison, down at turn two, cleanly done. So Lowndes is just continuing to battle away here, clawing every point that he can, and the next in his crosshairs is Chaz Mostert. He had his head down then for the sun. Did you see Lounge? He dropped his head down there because that sun is so bad running into the west. Craig Lounge forging forward. Stay with us. Watching the cars on the exit of turn number eight, the hairpin in the middle of the complex here. This is Rick Kelly, car number 15 in 12th position. Garth Tander behind him, who unfortunately took a tap at turn six from Michael Caruso earlier in the day, but he's fighting back. He's 13th there on screen at the moment. The margin is four and a half seconds. McLaughlin to Percat. And so uh, 
everybody at the moment will be just acutely aware of trying to make sure that they just look after these tyres enough to get home. A lot of debris in the front of Rick Kelly's car. You can see it there, that shot as they head down in towards turn number one. And more bad news for Mark Winterbottom, Neil. He's reporting he's got a, a damaged tyre and he's saying back to the team, there he is. Yeah, he said, I'll try and get it to the end. Yeah, I heard yeah. the message <laughs> myself, but uh, clearly that hasn't worked. And he's in nowhere land points-wise, so he doesn't need an accident. A DNF wouldn't serve him well, so they're better to get a tyre on it. When these things go bad, don't they? They're just It's just a very cruel game. After the bump early, a drive-through penalty, not good enough in qualifying. And down in 19th now, he'll come through the pit. He'll come out 20th. Punishing sun, and very hard to even find a an end point in the box. So they're actually doing all four. That keeps the balance in the car. And off they send him. So uh, he's 19th at the moment. Is Jason Bright. He's fifth. And he's got a battle going in all directions. He's had a very busy afternoon. Yes, so is his team boss, uh, Brad Jones. He's right on his toes at the moment. Uh, Bright, he's got good pace, Brad. Um, I didn't hear what you said so, there, Mark, no, so no, I'll he's, just um, add a little bit, will I? He's, he's going very well, Brody. got good pace. Brody's going really well. You know, uh, he's arguably the fastest car on the track at the moment. He's got Moffat, and um, and he's slowed him up a little bit now. But, you know, it's always tricky when you're running out of tie to get past someone. So I think uh, I think he's going really good. We just need to get past Moffat. And Fabian is uh, slowly catching the leaders. I, I don't know that he's going to going to get the Volvo, but I, I think he'll end up, as long as he's got enough tyres at the end, to get on to Nick. So hopefully he can then find his way by. We'll see what happens. But they're both very, very fast. Sounds like a good finish, mate. Enjoy. Well, I hope so, as long as we've got plenty of fuel. Bradley's drinking very heavily from the bucket of optimism there, yes. thinking that he's going to climb over the Volvo. But uh, that's the business they're in. So a lot of confidence there. And maybe they know something that we don't in terms of tyre consistency. But Bright is quick at the moment for sure. Look at this little battle. So we've got Coulthard ranging up onto the battle of, uh, at the back, I should say, of Percat. And remember that Nick picked up a fourth in Townsville, race number 20. He's not yet been on the podium in V8 supercar competition. He's second at the moment and continue, continuing this great run of consistency. And uh, Fabian yesterday, it was a bit of an up and down day for him. That's his engineer, Phil Key, a very bright man. Been engineering these cars successfully now over a long period of time. For a long time, worked with Jason Bright. And uh, his man, his former man, who's looked after by Andrew Edwards these days, is back in fifth position, Jason Bright. And you just heard how much pace he's got. So oh. can Nick Perkett hang on? It's three and a half seconds now, McLaughlin to Perkett. So Bradley might be onto something here in terms of pace. Look at those numbers. Well, he said there's something wrong with the left hand front tyre. Kidding me. No, no, there's something wrong with the left hand front, is what he's reporting. So that gap. It's come back now to 3.5 seconds. It was just over five before that to Percat. Coulthard's the one gaining on Percat. And remember that Coulthard stopped on lap 28, so the tyres on this car are two laps younger for Scott McLaughlin. Stopped on lap 30. Let's have a look. 3.4 seconds. Sector split to the first intermediate on this lap was exactly the same as Percat and almost exactly the same as Coulthard, and that first intermediate gets you between turns three and four, about the area where David Reynolds came unstuck. And what you've got to do is limit the exposure. So if you've got a little bit of tyre damage, turn the car at the corner early, get it to the apex, and don't load the tyre for as long as you would normally load it. So this will be one here, left-hander, get it turned in, run it around the inside of the corner, don't load the tyre. So a little bit of experience, he needs to be coaxed now by Richard, to get his way out of this because it's back at 2.9 seconds now the lead so Percat they've gained two seconds in the last two laps effectively a, a little bit of it could also be just tyres falling away at the back end of the race too just general degradation one of the interesting things about the Volvo and I've had several engaged discussions with Richard Holway about this is they've been searching to try and understand the balance they had a, a recent test at Winton and they felt they made great ground but that car has been trending opposite to what V8 supercars normally do. They normally hurt their rears, the cars slide around a lot, the back end, 
and you've got to adjust on the run to deal with it. What they've found with the Volvo this year, it's actually been the front of the car that's been giving them the grief, yep. and they've had to try and protect that later in the race, and that's counter to the way in which it's normally done with these cars. We're riding with Jason Bright. This is the right-hander at Turn 4. Bright is on the march at the moment. He's fifth. That's James Moffat in the foreground. Neil, you guys picked it. It was the correct call by Mark Winterbottom to come in. This is his right front tyre. And have a look at that. Look at that all peeling off. You can see the steel belt exposed. Oh. And why is it the right call? Remember turn one just out there? 270 kilometres now. What cops it? The right front tyre. You do not want it to fail there. Yeah, Larko, and I just spoke to Richard Holway. He looked at me, shrugged his shoulders. He said, we've got a bit of a drama. We'll see what happens. Oh, so, and it can be very easily done here. It could be just the way in which the tyre is wearing. Maybe there's been some structural damage in the case of the tyre. There's several locations around this racetrack where you climb and clobber the kerbs and in particular the back side of the kerb. They've been known to fracture these soft tyres relatively easily damaged. Five laps remaining. It's about 20 kilometres of racing. That's Alex Somerset talking to Nick Perkett just there. Manage those tyres. There's the gaps, roughly half a second a lap for the last three laps there. It's Nick Perkatz responded because he's the fastest car in that group. He just did a 33.08 versus a 33.67 for McLaughlin. Lowndes gets down the inside of Mostert. Lowndes has now got 14 positions from where he started. What a great run from Craig. He always does a great job in these long races and it'll serve him well for the Pertec Enduro Cup which starts at Sandown mid-September for us, three races coming up, and uh, Lowndes will be driving with Stephen Richards this year. That'll be a powerful combination. Last year's champion co-driver. This man on screen, car number 33, Scotty McLaughlin, he'll drive with Frenchman Alex Premer, who's previously driven for the Gary Rogers Motorsport outfit. Remember that the 25 drivers double, becomes 50 drivers. Enduro racing, two of them in the car. This is building to a fantastic conclusion. Nick Perkett, car triple two. Oliver Gavin will drive with him, the Englishman. Sports car race. And he's on at the moment as Mark Winterbottom sidestep the leaders just to give them space and let them get on with their thing. He's driving the race of his life at the moment, Perkat. This is brilliant. He really wants to try and close the deal to be able to put together his first V8 supercar podium in the main game as a primary full-time driver. He's done it before with Garth Tander as a co-driver, remember, at Bathurst. But this is different. This is the big time. It's what they all work for. It's 2.2 seconds. McLaughlin to Percat. Look at the margin eating away in the graphic at the bottom of the screen. There they are. You can see it. McLaughlin, Percat, Coulthard, James Moffat, Jason Bright, and the watching brief, Jamie Wincup, who's pocketing points at the moment. McLaughlin actually responded on that lap. He was only two tenths of a second away. It was a good lap for McLaughlin. And what he's got to do, as I said, about not just loading the tyre, but don't run it over those aggressive kerbs. So here, there's an aggressive kerb on the left-hand side when you get to five. There's an aggressive kerb at six. Make sure you don't bump it. He bumped it on the previous lap. Check this out. Turn it in there. There's chunks of rubber coming off these tyres. Soft tyres always do that. So to this point of the lap, he's only a tenth of a second away in terms of that split to Percat. What an incentive for a young guy. He's been a winner here in the early part of his career in Formula Ford. He's been a winner here in career and cup, but he's staring okay. down the possibility at the go. moment. Three to go. Broken. Maximum attack. Alex Somerset, engineer, maximum attack is the command. The gap is 1.9 seconds. He's paired up for an endurance win with Garth Tander at Mount Panorama. But he's not put together a solo victory. He's hunting the Volvo. 1.8 seconds on the micro sector timing. McLaughlin, Percat, Coulthard, Volvo, Holden, Holden, and then a Nissan, James Moffat. And the numbers tell the story. Good job, Nick Percat. He really responded because it wasn't so long ago, it was only five or six laps ago, that Fabian Coulthard was doing all the moving. That's Alex Somerset. On the radio there, you can just see that he's been in contact a couple of times. Matt Nielsen just behind him. Jason Bush over there in the foreground. Richard Holway in the lower screen looking at his young charger, coaxing him all day. Eggshells, eggshells is what he's been saying to Scott McLaughlin to not hurt the tyre. This is a Walkinshaw Racing entry, part of the Holden Racing Team group. Matt Nielsen 
on the right of Alex Somerset. Tie in the foreground. 1.7 seconds. He's sneaking the rate down at about a tenth of a second per sector at the moment. Here he is, Percat. He made two positions at the championship at Queensland Raceway. He's still down in 18th. But it was a season best result for him at Townsville, that fourth that I talked about before. And he qualified on the front row, position number two. And coming into this event, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, qualified and finished in the top five, the top ten of five of the last six races. Townsville and Queensland Raceway have given him an enormous confidence boost, proven to him that he can do the job. McLaughlin is driving the car as straight as he can drive it. Gently loading the front tyre. Gently progressing the throttle. Here he is. A little safety tap of the brake to make sure that he's got brake pressure into one. Punished by the Western Sun. Bit of mid-corner oversteer in the high-speed left-hander. Only five hundredths of a second between the two cars on that one. So McLaughlin responds with a great lap, a 33.92 versus a 33.87. Well done, Scott. That's the sort of stuff you've got to do. The guy's coming at you. He's filling the mirror. You know he's been told maximum attack, Nick Percat. And remember that for Gary Rogers and for his group at Volvo, this is potentially a monstrous recovery. After a shocking day yesterday, and in line at the moment for potentially race victory number four for McLaughlin. Meantime, the battle between Jason Bright and Jamie Wincup continues. All of a sudden, Bright's not looking quite as racy. He stopped on lap number 26. Wincup stopped on 29. The three laps difference in the tyre age could be telling. Wincup's coming back. There's more points on offer. And based on what I saw yesterday in that wet race when he was prepared to put it on the line, he'll have a crack. He, he will. He's made huge gains. Nine tenths of a second on the previous lap. So he's got great pace. Look at the drive traction that Wink Cup's got there in comparison. Well done. Oh, he's turned across in front. I thought that was going to be a big moment then for Jason Bright. He's doing the crisscross. He's back up the inside. Wink Cup now has got a hold station. He stuck it back to first. He did. He had to put another gear. He actually jammed it back in first to relaunch the car. Now Wink Cup is side by side. He's starting to get into a position to be able to stay there and hold his ground. There's nothing in it. Who blinks? Wink Cup gets through. What an amazing pass, but he's exposed on the inside now as they make the run to two. Bright's done it all before. He argues the case, and Jason Bright drops back into position after a great exchange. That was great driving. Both guys so close, going so fast. And Percat took a big chunk out of that lead again on that previous lap. But McLaughlin on the final lap of the race. All the heavies, all the executives from Volvo Australia are here this weekend. This has been an extraordinary first season of racing for the S60 Volvo. Scott McLaughlin at the helm. He's qualified well. He's been the benchmark guy in the last nine or ten races in terms of his qualifying performance. He had such a difficult day yesterday. And what a great response. He's got to be able to hang on. It's only 0.8 of a second. There's nothing in it. After 51 laps and 200 kilometres, what an extraordinary pressure motor race. And limping to the flag with some vulnerable tyres on the Volvo. McLaughlin's not there yet, but he's got one corner remaining. He needs to make a straight exit. Nick Perkett is coming at him. How will this play out? Fourth, fifth, sixth, and Scott McLaughlin. Nick Perkett, point three of a second. Yeah. What an outstanding victory. What an outstanding job. race. And race win number four for McLaughlin. And well done, Volvo. That's all the guys. All the guys from Gary Rogers. That was Matt Braid, the CEO of Volvo Australia in the background there. That's Matt there, there's Gary Rogers, all of the team. What an extraordinary job in the first year of racing. That's a misty eye for Gary Rogers. Yeah. A great demonstration of teamwork and hard work by Volvo. Oh, and Tanda. Drama for Garth Tanda. As McLaughlin celebrates, he got there by 0.3 of a second from Nick Perkett.
and you've got to stand and dip your hat to Nick Perkat today. That's been a beautiful drive. Fabian Coulthard, a wonderful performance too. But the point I wanted to make was for Volvo, for Rogers, for McLaughlin, for Richard Holway, for that entire group of guys to step back up after yesterday's crushing disaster is a tremendous sign. Congratulations. 100% Neil, that was such a difficult one for them yesterday. <laughs> uh, Richard just said you can go again. Not many engineers tell you you can do more of that stuff. They normally calm you down rather than incentivize you, but here he is, he's right out sideways. Just be careful you don't go off into the grass. There's nothing worse than a crash Volvo on the way back to the podium. That determination showed by Jamie Wincup before also, Mark, gave him 55 points for a fifth. It would have been 51 had he not had the crack. Yep, four points. And you fight for it all day long in this very hard business. So that was a nice move. 100%. Incidentally, a couple of other points of interest. Lowndes got to ninth. Winterbottom, because of all those dramas for him this afternoon, 20th. How's Scotty? Lights are up. <laughs> He's in there somewhere. <laughs> Can I also just reiterate the Nick Perkat comment? That's the best I've seen Nick Perkat drive. That was a very good performance today. Very disciplined. Used the car as hard as you could possibly use them. A bit like that tyre. That might be too much jandle. <laughs> it is too much jandle. <laughs> He's got to open the door because he can't see. <laughs> Yesterday it was because of rainfall. Today it's tyre smoke. How's that for a turnaround? An engine fail yesterday. An engine change to scramble the car back out onto the grid for the second race in the afternoon. Then the right rear wheel came off it as they hurried the car out. They didn't quite get the prep right. Came back today with a stunning, stunning performance as a team. And a great job by James Moffat too, Neil, to be fourth for Nissan Motor Company. He was very, very fast. He looked like at one stage he was going to get onto the back of the podium with Fabian Coulthard. And Jamie Winkup, as you said, great manoeuvre on Bright late in the race to get to fifth position. Pole position, 200 kilometres of racing, 51 very hard laps. And at the end of it, Scotty McLaughlin grabs another race victory in 2014. That one was a bit special. Didn't quite have the firepower right at the end to hold that five second margin that he'd been holding over a long period of time. But he just controlled that car, drove it perfectly straight, didn't lock brakes, didn't light it up coming off the corners, and he gets maximum points and total satisfaction from a job very well done. <laughs> well done. What a great drive. Scott McLaughlin over Nick Perkat, Fabian Coulthard, James Moffat just off the podium, but a terrific performance from him as well. Nissan have done a very good job today. Jamie Wincup, how was, how was that performance to grab those additional points at the very end of the race? Then Van Gisberg and Caruso, Lowndes and Mostert, that is your top ten. And that little car performed flawlessly this afternoon. So the super slow-mo replay at turn number one. <laughs> and look at it, it's ear to ear grins for these guys. It was tears at the same point yesterday afternoon. Unbelievable turnaround. They Sally thoroughly... Parkinson, their PR officer in the middle there, and all of the crew, the hard-working crew that have had to deal with a lot of dramas. Remember their other car, Robert Dahlgren's car, is damaged. They have to take that, they'll have to take it back to Melbourne and rectify. Let's get down there with Barretts. Scott, what a moment. And I know every win's a great win, but that one just felt extra special from where you came from yesterday. Mate. These guys at GRM and girls, uh, fantastic. It's uh, a massive achievement for us. To get a Sunday win, we've been struggling. Hey, we only got it by a little margin. I was pushing so hard at the end there, but uh, didn't stop me doing a mad burnout as well. I was so happy. A great last few laps, and Nick Perkett was really coming for you. Oh, he was, man. I could see him. The lights were on. And, uh, yeah, I just uh, a lot, quick shout-out to Lockie at our, 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 uh, our Composites department. He gets to shave a beard. He hasn't shaved a beard since our last race win, so happy that I could get that change because you look stupid. <laughs> nah. A great performance. Well done, Scott, and enjoy that podium in first place. Yeah, hello to Mum and Dad too. This is awesome. <laughs>
Right, uh, let's give it across to Nick Perkhead because this was an incredible effort, Nick. You were coming, coming, coming. And uh, look, I know Bathurst champion, but we thought today was going to be the day for your first individual win. I know. It was, uh, Alex got on the radio about six to go and goes, I think he's having a bit of a struggle. Maybe push on if you've got something left. And um, I conserved the softs for the, that whole stint, really. And I didn't think it was going to happen. And then they said, get on with it. So I had a bit of a crack, but massive thanks to my whole whole team. The heavy haulage guys done a massive job um, from Friday. The car wasn't great and they turned it around. And this is a you know, special tribute to a dear friend of our family, Andrew. We've got it on the front of my helmet there and sadly uh, passed away last week. So it's, um, yeah, this is for him. Thank you. Nick, step by step this year, it's been getting better and better. You've been getting closer and closer to this position. How much encouragement do you take away from this weekend? Um, it's a massive confidence boost. You know, uh, the, the whole team, that you know, they had the confidence to put me in a car. James Rosenberg had the confidence to bring his licence to us and um, I told him that the, the team would be good and um, you know, they were paying the faith and we we're just proving that we can run four cars. Burgess and Teco and Alex are doing an awesome job in designing parts and getting it all happening. But um, yeah, I'm going to uh, soak this up. It's awesome. Bring on the season of endurance, Nick. Well done. Cool, thank you. And Fabian Coulthard, a solid performance once again. Fabian, that was a great finish. It was all happening all around you, and you managed to hold on and grab that third spot on the podium. Well done. Yeah, look, it was good. And, uh, you know, I came at Nick there a little bit at the start, you know, the start of that stint, but you know, our tyres just couldn't hang on. But I think we've learned a few things from Queensland Raceway, and, you know, the Lockwood Commodores, uh, you know, it's pretty good and responding very, very well to a few things. So credit to my guys. You know, they worked hard. You know, we fit, threw a fair few changes at it in the wet, you know, yesterday and things like that. So they've... They've had the ring hanging out, but uh, it's a credit to them as well. It's been an incredible weekend of ups and downs, hasn't it? From the wild wets of yesterday to the, the conditions of today. Uh, I know Brad Jones, your team boss, was in the garage just watching the great speed that you had, and that's something positive that you take away from this weekend now. Yeah, totally. And, uh, you know, the guys are on the radio saying, how's the car? And I'm saying, look, it's probably the best car I've had. And, uh, you know, it's, it's no lies. And I'm a pretty harsh critic. And, uh, you know, when it's bad, I'll let them know. But, look, you know, it was pretty good today. Pretty we couldn't hang on to the tyres. But uh, happy for Nick. You know, obviously, cycling buddy and my other Kiwi mate, Scotty. You know, it's a credit to those boys as well. Well done, Fabian. Jump up and enjoy this. Right, thank you. Yeah, three really impressive blokes out of the younger generation this weekend. Obviously, Nick Perkett, Scotty McLaughlin. The third one in my book was um, young James Moffat. Mate, I just thought you drove very well. We sat on the grid and another great effort for fourth place there, mate. Well done. Yeah, thanks, Cl Larko. We, we gave it our absolute all. We... Um, not, nothing left on the table and um, man it was sketchy there in the middle of the race uh, or after that first safety car when Courtney was dropping all the oil so um, with the setting sun oil all over your windscreen um, you had to be really really careful so uh, we were able to press on a bit in, in the middle stint there on the hards and uh, just didn't quite have the pace on the softs of Fabian. And James, going into the Pertec Enduro Cup now, you've shown really good pace here this weekend in both the wet and the dry at a tough circuit. You must be looking forward to that. Well, Sandown's one of those deals, Larko, that it could be any type of weather condition. So uh, it's good that the car was working in both conditions this weekend. Obviously, Sandown's a completely different style of circuit, but uh, we'll go there with a bit of momentum. I've got a great co driver in Taz Douglas, so looking forward to pairing up with him again. But, uh, look, congratulations to Scotty and his team. They did a stellar job today. Well said, mate, and top effort, Joe. Thanks, Larko. Cheers. It was a top effort, wasn't it? Well done, James Moffat and everybody at Nissan Motorsport. And that little Norton Hornet was flying along. Scotty McLaughlin contained by the tiniest margin. Forever it sat in the high fours, nearly five seconds at one point. But in the end, it was only 0.3 of a second. Percat, Coulthard, Moffat, then Wincup, Bright, Van Gisburg and Caruso, Lowndes and Most. It was the top ten. And then many other tales to tell in the second half of the field there. Mark Winterbottom, what a very difficult weekend for him. The podium is set. Here's Mark Barretta. Our 28th race of the year, the Sydney Motorsport Park 400. Would you please congratulate our winning driver for Valvoline Racing, GRM, Scott McLaughlin. In second place for Walkinshaw Racing, Nick Perkat. And in third place for Lockwood Racing, Fabian Coulthard. Representing the winning team, Valvoline Racing, GRM, Dean Cowling making the presentation of our third place trophy is Paul Blair, Managing Director, Armoured Auto Group. Yeah. Presenting the second place is Stephen Dutton, the Chief Executive Officer of Pertec Fluid Solutions. Yeah. Making the presentation to our winning team is Andrew Luxton, the Head of Marketing from United Petroleum. And finally making the presentation to our winning trophy 
First place driver, the Honourable Katrina Hodgkinson MP, Minister for Primary Industries, Assistant Minister for Tourism and Major Events. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2014 V8 Supercars Sydney Motorsport Park 400 Race 28 winners. Well done, boys. Fantastic. Really good race this afternoon. McLaughlin, Percat and Coulthard. How's Nick Perkett enjoying something very special there in his career? Have a look at those points. Provisional at this stage, but the margins opened out to 135 points. Win cup to winter bottom. Craig Lowndes fighting performance today to be able to get inside that top 10, Scaifey. It was a really good job, wasn't it, Craig? Fought his way through the whole way. But remember, we've got 1,500 points up for offer as we come into the season of endurance.